Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Dolphinatic, and welcome back to another Pokemon X and Y PU battle. Today I have a battle against Kaiser slash Scissor. I, I don't really know how to say his name, so uh, I'm really sorry if you're watching this and I've said your name wrong. Uh, correct me if I have. And also, leave me a link to your Twitter or YouTube, because I honestly do not remember where I battled this person from. Why I had it. Obviously, it was an arranged battle, because it's PU team. He's got a full-on PU team, so... Um, yeah, if you're watching this, please let me know. Anyway, I'm bringing the same team as always. Um, I really do need to bring something new. I mean, I, I do have a few... Well, as you saw, I have my Blossom and uh, that team, but that was kind of thrown together last minute. I want to make a proper team like this one, which has synergy and is an absolute force to be reckoned with. I don't actually know how many games... I must have lost about two games out of God knows how many. 30-odd, maybe, with this team, and, uh, oh, this team just does not lose, as you see. Um, anyway, here, my opponent starts off with a Mr. Mime, and I don't really know what Mr. Mime leads can do, um, but I actually lead off with my Torterra, and I don't want to stay in on the potential Icy Wind, so I switch into Magma, and um, that's the only reasonable explanation, but he goes for the substitute on my switch, which is a really good play. He can fire off a Psychic, he's not Life Orb, um, and he's not a choice, obviously, because he used Substitute, so, um, and he's not He's not a soul vest and he's not leftovers, so he must. Well, in my mind, it would only seem logical that he was a expert belt set, but that seems a bit weird and a bit gimmicky for a Mr. Mime. Anyway, I bring in my Terabyte, my Porygon, because this thing is such a great specially defensive wall. If you haven't tried using it before, I would highly recommend you do. Anyway, in comes his X Cropeen. Uh, it's his. Uh, I, can't even, I can't even remember what, what the hell is it called? Um, Crocorock, that's the one. Or is it? It's not Crocodile. No, yeah, Crocorock. And anyway, I have a safe switch in here. I can bring in Deku. I don't care if he knocks off my leftovers. It's going to do absolutely nothing. Uh, turns out he's the Choice Scarf Moxie set here because he switches. Although I guess Seed Bomb wouldn't be that good. But then again, not many people expect me to carry Seed Bomb. They expect Earthquake. But here he obviously predicts my Stealth Rock, so I just go for my Stealth Rocks. If I'd have gone for a nice and powerful Seed Bomb on that turn, that would have been a lovely prediction. Not that I wanted to play any predictions at this point, I just wanted to get my Stealth Rocks up. Anyway, I bring in Terabyte again, because I know Terabyte can wall this thing pretty well. I find out this thing has Gluttony, and I don't know why people don't use the Torrent variant, because at least then you're going to get a boost on your Hydro Pump. Unless, of course, you run the berries on um, this thing. But I haven't actually seen anyone run a berry on this thing yet, so I, I don't get it. And he's actually a Life Orb variant, which, again, makes me a bit confused as to why you're running Gluttony and not Torrent. Anyway, that doesn't matter now, uh, th th this battle is in the past, I go for the recover, um, because I know I can take whatever move he wants to go for, maybe not a focus blast, I'm not too sure, but stab hydro pump probably does as much as a super effective focus blast. Anyway, focus blast, I should say anyway, he comes Mary Bella, and that's the only bad thing about Porygon is this thing gets walled um, by Vileplume pretty well, but I do get the Thunder Wave off, which is quite nice, and um, while Vile Plume isn't the fastest, so it doesn't really hinder its speed that much, um, it does get the nice chance of it not being able to attack. So I'm going to Swagmar here, one, because I'm hoping it gets paralyzed, and two, um, hoping it doesn't go for an attacking move. And I might be able to hit this thing with some powerful, uh, for some high damage for some with a powerful attack like Flamethrower or Overheat. Um, but I actually predict this perfectly, I believe, and I go for the Focus Blast, expecting me to bring in Crocorock. Um, thinking he was a defensive variant, but I just go straight up for the Focus Blast, and after Self Rocks, I don't know if course it'll get sturdy, I don't think it does, I think it gets Regenerator. Um, it actually just dies flat out to a Focus Blast, so that Corsola did absolutely sweet FA in this battle, so I'm really sad really, because I want to see what Corsola could actually do. Um, but in this battle it turned out not much. So in comes Mr. Mime, and um, he's going to go for a Substitute, I'm not going to switch out, expecting him to go for a Psychic. I'm just going to stay in and let this thing die now. I go for a flamethrower, and um, this is really good. This has put me in a good position because he can either substitute again next turn, because I think I can live another turn after life orb damage, um, going for another attack. So he has to attack me this turn, really. He goes for the charge beam, and it does take me out, and unfortunately he does get the special attack boost. However, it's not that scary for me because I can take out this Mr. Mime pretty easily with Kong, my Simipaw, and I'm base 101 speed. I don't actually know what Mr. Mime's base speed is. I think it's 90, 80 or 90, something like that. So it's not too slow. Um, but I can take it out with a Ice Beam in case he wants to switch into something else. But because I know he's not a special defensive variant, I can definitely take him out with that. Um, he can now safely bring in Heat More, though. Um, it doesn't really bother me too much because he bought it in on some... Well, he, always had, he was always going to have to bring it in on Stealth Rocks. So it loses a load of damage anyway. 
Uh, I actually come in and trace this guy's flash fire, and um, he goes for the fire blast, which is quite nice and funny. Um, I, that wasn't my intentions, but yeah, it worked out perfectly. He goes for the superpower now, and um, I barely live with 4 HP. That's probably because he's not invested in attack, I'm guessing. He's probably specially attacking and then just has superpower for this kind of occasion uh, on there. But I go for the try attack and with the special attack boost, and that will have just quite a lot of damage. And I get the freeze, which is hilarious because it's a fire type. Um, why he didn't go for a fire move there, I do not know, because I'm pretty sure if you use a fire move when you're frozen, you defrost. If if that's just me, I, I don't know really. But he goes for another superpower here, and I do get the recover off because he did get oh because I did manage to freeze him, and I live on 4 HP again. Porygon being an absolute boss that it is this battle, and um, yeah, he's now minus two. So I go for the try attack here and kill him. I could have gone for the recover, and. Um, Taking this heat more down with more health, uh, it's life orb as well. So whatever it wanted to hit me with, it was going to end up taking itself out, and I could have just recovered up. But this is a battle. PU is for fun. It's not for being a stally idiot. So I figured, you know what? I'm not going to bother. Let's just let Terabyte die to this thing. And the fact that it can, well, obviously it's going to kill me with four HP left. Uh, this confirms he's the choice scarf Moxie set, which I've been quite curious as to try and run it myself, but I haven't actually ever got to the like round to doing it. Anyway, in comes, uh, or I bring in Sneasel, knowing I'm Scarfed, so I can live whatever he wants to go for. And uh, I live on 1 HP, and I know I can safely take him out with an Ice Punch. I didn't want to try and go for Ice Well, I could have gone for Ice Shard there, it probably wouldn't have hurt, because um, I could have gone for two Ice Shards in a row. But uh, I do take this thing out with an Ice Punch, so that's all good and dandy. Anyway, in comes Simipore, and this thing is always going to be a threat, because I know from my own Simipore that Simipore is scary as hell. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to let my Sneasel die. And I'm just going to go for the Ice Shard to get some damage off from this thing. He actually goes for the Hidden Power. I don't really know what he's expecting. Um, probably... I don't know what I have left. I can't remember at this point. I have Torterra. I have... I can't remember. You know, I bring in Kong, my own Simipore. And uh, I think he said at this point it was a speed tie. And I do win the speed tie of a Grass Knot. Um, and that thing does get taken down. So, Simipore is a threat, but I don't think he was running the most effective set, a Life Orb set. Obviously, Life Orb doesn't make moves as powerful as Choice Specs, so, um, yeah, always go for power. I'm telling you. Anyway, I'm going to switch Kong back out here, because I know Kong is going to be pretty good, because all my moves can hit his Pokemon with super effective damage. So, I decide I'm going to sack off Torterra at this point, because I want to keep Simipore around to take this thing out with a few Ice Beams. Uh, pretty confident I could live a Giga Drain or something. Or maybe even two, I don't know. I might just give the seed bomb here because I want to get some damage off while he tries and kills me. He goes for the sludge bomb. And it does a decent amount. Honestly, I, I didn't actually realise until now ground resisted poison. I know ground's super effective against poison. Um, so actually Torterra only takes poison attacks neutrally, which I didn't actually realise until this literally this second. So that's handy to know. Uh, I learned it from my own videos. Hopefully you guys learn from my videos too. And he gets the aromatherapy here and gets rid of the paralysis, which kind of sucks and kind of doesn't suck, it's just stalling it. Seriously, phone? I, my phone's on silent, I don't get why it keeps doing that, never mind. Um, I go for another seed bomb, just trying to get some more damage off on him, and he does go for the sludge bomb, and I think it's enough to take me out this turn. Nope, it's not, but he does get the poison, which takes me down. Um, well, hopefully it takes me down at the end of the turn, because my whole idea of, was trying to let my Torterra die, because I wanted to safely bring in Simipore, um, and finally Torterra does go down this turn, and uh, it allows me to bring in Simipore, Oh, Captain Brave Bird even. God, Captain Brave Bird. Seriously, phone. Captain Brave Bird does come in, and it does go for the Brave Bird to finish the game off. So, good game. Um, I've got your name already, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this battle. Um, I hadn't actually watched this over since I just recorded it, so I, it probably wasn't the best narration. But, you know what? I need to get a video out today, guys, and it's getting late as it is. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Plus, hype for Hoenn Remakes. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys around. Goodbye.